It's a bittersweet day because we are selling the 2021 Yamaha Wolverine RMAX 2 XTR. That is such the world's longest title. And it's kind of bittersweet because we've had a lot of fun building this thing and going on adventures. If you haven't checked those videos out, be sure to do that. But we have a new project coming. You'll have to stay tuned to find out what it is. But we're going to sell this and make room for it. But before we do, I wanted to do a walk around on the rig and just talk about the stuff that has worked really well, some of the stuff that we've done to it, and just kind of an overall impression of reliability and our thoughts about the side-by-side. -side. So let's get rolling. Up front, we added limit straps. And the reason for limit straps is because of the bigger tires. Now these are 34 inch tire, but they measure closer to what most people have as a 35 inch tire. They weigh about 10 pounds more than the stock tires because we actually went down a little bit in weight with the wheels being that they are the internal beadlock method wheels. But when you add weight to the outside of your rig, it's going to try to pull the shock apart when it extends out quickly. So if you went a little bit too quickly over something, a bump or something like that, that suspension is going to unload and it's going to put all that force of all the weight of the additional wheel and tire that you added against that shock. So it can damage the shocks, so it is a nice preventative measure to add limit straps. So we added these when we added the wheels and tires. Now wheels and tires I've always thought are the most expensive upgrade you can do to a rig because it requires so many additional supporting modifications if you want it to perform well. So the limit straps are one of those. We also added new tender springs on the top of our coilover. And these are basically just to add a little bit more ride compliance to the suspension. I think they have helped a bit the shocks are also adjustable, medium, soft, and hard. And typically we run them soft when we're rock crawling and hard if we want it to perform with a little less body lean. We did remove the sway bar, which does give more body lean on corners, but realistically we just don't drive it that fast most of the time. And we like the extra wheel travel when off-roading, especially in the rocks. Now when it comes to rocks, one of the things that you have to beef up is your steering. And we added well erasing heavy duty steering, which is replaces the inner and outer tie rod. And it still uses the stock steering rack, but it massively increases the strength. So far, it's been holding up really well. You can check out all the places we've taken this thing and we've had no failures. The next thing you have to upgrade is the axle shafts. So the CV axles, these are the Rhino 2.0 and they replaced the stock axle shafts. Now, many people have said the stock rear axle shafts are pretty strong. It's hard to break them, but many people have reported the fronts breaking and I didn't want to take any chances because when we took it on the trip this last summer, we were out for multiple months and driving across country and the worst thing to happen would be to have our rig break and cut our trip short or have to go back home or not have the parts. So with these we've had no failures, no issues, no noises. They've been performing flawlessly. So I would recommend those guys. And then we added replacement control arms. So upper and lower control arms and these are high clearance they almost touch, it's amazing how close they come to the CV axle and it adds massive amount of ground clearance. That has been a game changer to stop uh, hitting the rocks as much or any other obstacle you might encounter. They also moved the front axle forward about an inch and a half. That allowed us to run these bigger tires and not hit the bodywork. And we've got videos showing how we actually tested the full compression of the suspension. So that's been working really well. Now I also added a scissor lift and I just put it inside the frame here and twisted it up to hold it in place. But it's amazing to me how there's no provision on these for changing a tire. 
and if you're going out a bit further from your home or your travel rig you know being able to change your tire could be an essential item to keep you going and get back home the next thing added was the worn synthetic rope and a little rope stopper and the, the nice uh, fair lead and also added the worn Bluetooth controller for the phone. So this stock came with this worn uh, 45 VRX winch, which has a toggle switch in the cab to use it, which is great. However, a lot of times when you're winching, you should be outside the rig if it's a sketchy situation. And the ability to do it out of harm's way is really slick. That phone app, for controlling it is insanely responsive. It is super great. We used it a few times and very pleased with it. I am super happy with the synthetic rope replacing the cable. And then we have a couple recovery points up front. Haven't had to use those, but they are there. And then the whole belly is a skid plate. So it's UHMW and it's nice thick UHMW and that is amazing because it allows you to slide off obstacles and not get hung up. So there's plenty of scratches from impact on the bottom, but it also protects the factory chassis on the underside. So those could always be replaced or removed and you still have that nice factory undamaged uh, underside. So that's been super nice. Looking up top, we have the Yamaha windshield with the wiper and the windshield washer. And that is the best upgrade. It was the most expensive windshield available, but the fit and finish is the best of any of the options out there. And the very first time we drove it, uh, after installing the windshield, it started raining. And how great was that to push the button and have the windshield clear with the wiper. And that washer system works really great. There's a little washer tank underneath the hood that gets mounted. And I am super pleased with that. I absolutely think it's worth the money if you want more of an automotive quality uh, piece in your rig. And it significantly helps with visibility because if you have uh, the plastic window, that dust just clings to it. With this, it's really a lot less of an issue of getting dust build up on the inside. And on the outside, you just turn on the windshield wiper, clear it off, really simple. Now coming around to the side, we have these Patagonia SXT 34 inch tires. And these are 34 by 10 by 15, so it's a 15 inch wheel. And these things, I think initially when I saw them, I was concerned because they are a crowned tire. It's kind of like much like a racing style tire. And I was really concerned it wouldn't have good traction. However, I was really impressed with the overall diameter. It's a big tire. It measures, even with load on it, over 34 inches. And uh, I think they rated it at 34 and a half and it measures all of that uh, on the wheel, which is really impressive. These wheels are really slick because they are internal beadlock. Um, they've got kind of a ribbing on the insides to retain the, the bead. So we've had no issues with the tire coming off the wheel. And one of the slick things with going with this style setup is we actually purchased through, through Discount Tire. And Discount Tire will only uh, mount road legal wheels and tires. So these are completely dot legal. These tires are dot legal. These wheels are dot legal and it's great because they provided a full tire replacement warranty and we can take it in anytime they'll rebalance it for free and rotate them or whatever else just like a normal car that's pretty fantastic so so far these tires have been holding up really well they've not had any issues with chunking especially the rocks that's been super nice to not have huge tread blocks getting ripped off um, they are super grippy. It's amazing how they'll just connect up. And a lot of times getting more biting surface is the key. A lot of times people think off-road tires, you know, just big old gaps is the best. Well, that's not really true, especially in rocks. You really want more gripping edges. And these are actually side tread blocks and there's a lot of different angles 
and they've worked super well. So I am really pleased with them. I think they, they aren't a looker tire as far as they don't look cool as far as off-road tires go compared to some of them, but performance-wise, you can't argue with how good they are. And they roll well, and really all conditions, they're, they're good. I think the, the one area that is probably their least good performance would be deep sand, because you really need more of a paddle tire for that. But otherwise, my goodness, no complaints at all. It even has really good sidewall grip for extra traction there. Super pleased with these guys, and it's great that that's through America Discount Tire, which is all across the country and super easy to uh, get for replacements or whatnot. And we have a full set of five, so that way, if we ever did have a problem, we can just swap out the tire and be going down the road. We added mirrors because we wanted to make this fully road legal. And these mirrors are pretty slick because they have these LED lights, which are surprisingly bright. Partly because they're out on the outer end of the vehicle, but they're just as bright as the factory headlights, if not more so. And there's just a switch on the dash to turn these on, and they fold if they were to hit a tree. Really easy to adjust. Those have been a really nice addition. And then on the side, we added the factory Yamaha soft side doors. And these are fantastic because, let's face it, there's times where it's dusty and you don't want to just have all that dust blown into your cab. That's super nice. It's also really nice if it starts raining. It's also really nice if you get caught out after dark and it starts getting cold and you don't want to freeze to death. That makes a massive, massive improvement. That will especially keep your ride companion uh, happy if, it, if that's your wife going with you. She'll definitely appreciate the side door. So we've been super happy with that. I think it's a really nice addition to this thing, as well as the rear window. So this is the factory Yamaha glass sliding rear window. And this is, once again, fit and finish, really good. It works with the factory Yamaha top really well and it matches that front glass window really well. And I think it's super important to have a good enclosed cab um, for how we like to use it. We think of this more as an off-road buggy rather than like an ATV. And so having more of the automotive quality to it has been really important and just has made it so much more enjoyable. So let's keep going around here. You can see the bed. And this, of course, is the factory dump bed, so it lifts up and tips. And you can see in the back here that we have our same Fox shocks. These are factory ones with the limit strap. And it's got the upper or the lower control arms that are high clearance to match the front. And we added this bed rack. So this bed rack was built by my buddy, uh, and he did a fantastic job. We really wanted to make it look as though it was a factory Yamaha accessory, but there was no option to carry a spare tire, but then also keep your bed free. And so what we did is we used the factory bolts and we made a little template and basically got this thing really fitting nice. And it sits just high enough so that the spare tire doesn't block all of the visibility with the rear view mirror. We put a flag mount on the end here, and then the spare tire, it'll fit actually up to about a 35. This fits with a little clearance, we basically moved it, so if you wanted to go up even a little more in tire size, you could probably do that. Now, the back, for overlanding, we've got our two bins, and if you haven't seen our video with our camping setup, be sure to check that out. But basically, the two bins fit perfectly in here where you don't have to do any additional strapping. So when the kit closes, it holds it in from moving forward and back, and then it's held in with the bars from the rack. So it's super fast to access your lunch or your gear. You can just pull down the tailgate and pop these open. And then we have two Rotopax mounts in the bed that can be used either for the water or for fuel. And so those are interchangeable, same size container, and there's one on either side. But these are super slick, great way to have 
dust-free storage. And even if you're doing a day trip, sometimes we'll just take one of these bins and just run a strap over it, just keep it from side and slide to side. And that works really well. In the back, you can see we have our road legal kit. So it's got the license plate and the UHMW skids come all the way to the back. And you can see the clearance on these lower control arms. These are game changer. The factory arms are just a straight piece and they get caught up on everything. The first time we took it out, it was getting hit on stuff. And I thought they really needed to design something better. So these super ATV arms have been fantastic. I would definitely recommend them. Some people have um, knocked them for quality, but I don't see that all. The welds are really good. Um, power coating is really good. It's held up well for how we've used it. Now, come around the side here, you can see we also added a shovel mount for the rack. So it just has a couple of these quick fist mount holders so you can pull off your shovel really quickly. So that's really essential if you're doing any sort of overlanding and uh, you're needing to use the, you know, dig your own little hole for uh, doing your business. Super great or campfire, uh, you gotta have a shovel. So that's really an essential item there. And then we also did some performance modifications. So it's got the well erasing block off plate off of the valve cover. And that, the main advantage to that is that it, it gives the engine, it just runs better. One of the problems that some people said is that you can have it cold start and it will stall out when you first start it. And that completely will resolve any of that. It just runs better. And uh, so I've been happy with that. Then down the side, of course, we've got this same side enclosure here. And then on the inside, we've added a bunch of sound editing material to the roof, all the plastics, the inside of the plastics, um, the footwell area. We cut a floor mat, so it has a nice floor mat, so you can just pop it out and dump out your dirt, which makes it so much easier to live with when you go out on an adventure. On the inside, we have the controls for the windshield wiper and the sprayer to wash off the window. And then we added, oh, here's the factory button for the winch controller for winching in and out. And then this is the switch for the side mirror lights, the LED lights. And this is the factory controller for the sport trail and crawl modes. And then inside you can see it's got a really nice bright display cluster and it's worked really well. And then it's got the two wheel drive, four wheel drive and four wheel drive lock on this side. And then it's got the controller for the blinkers, turn signal and horn. And uh, that's worked out really well. It's nice to have it fully road legal. So it's got the full uh, insurance registration and it has basically the requirements to meet for most all states that allow these things to possibly be on the road with the road legal tires, the mirrors, the uh, ty uh, wheels being road legal, all the, the turn signals, the horn, all the stuff that you need for essential operation. The other thing that this model comes with is this in-dash computer basically. It's a little tablet and this flips down and you can actually remove the tablet and use it in your home or upload different tracks to it. And it's actually pretty slick. You can record your own little trip and you can also uh, see all the vitals on your vehicle, which is really neat. It does the fuel mileage and you can change these little uh, display items so it can be whatever you like it to be but it's a really slick little thing. Uh, some people don't like them, but I think it's really nice. And the integration is really great when you're out on an adventure, not to have more stuff bouncing around or in the way. And uh, so we've really enjoyed that. The other stuff that you can't see that's kind of still essential is it does have a well racing tuner for it and allows it to run different mappings for fuel types, including 87 octane. Currently, it's running the performance tune with the 91 octane. And then we also have the clutch upgrades from Weller Racing with the new sleeve and the, um, the spring and so forth like that. 
and it's been performing really well. The transmission's given us no issues. And that really brings up one of the things that I've seen a lot with these side-by-sides, and this is the first one we've ever owned, but a lot of people say that, that they have issues with you know, breakdowns of reliability and so forth like that. And granted, some people probably use them, you know, really, you know, just abuse them, whereas we're pretty careful with ours. But the fact is, this thing has been crazy reliable. You know, we've had zero mechanical failures. It's had no hiccups or issues where it's left us stranded or anything breaking on it. All the modifications we did were more or less just to give us a little bit more capability and a little bit more security for doing these multi-day trips and especially these multi-day trips that were on rough terrain like the Rubicon Trail that uh, you just don't want to get stranded. You have no cell service and it's a long ways in and a long ways out. So we're really happy with the modifications that we did and they've performed really well for us so far. And once again, you can check out all the videos that we've done showing the different trails that this has been on. Just get an idea of what it's capable of and also just to see the different parts in action. But overall, I think we're still super happy with it. Uh, we also have the headsets and the headsets, uh, the, the Senna headsets, um, Tough Talk lights have been amazing. Just to be able to have Faith outside the vehicle and us to be able to communicate when she's trying to spot me, she doesn't have to you know, talk loudly, she can just talk in her normal voice. And then when we're in the cab, especially traveling at you know, speeds over you know, five miles an hour, it's nice to have that so you can just talk really um, standard tones and just be able to communicate without all the noise in your ear with the machine. So when we first did the video, we explained you know, things that we didn't like with the side-by-side. -side. And I think most of those things, even after basically a year of ownership, really still are true. So the problems we've had with it is, you know, you're gonna get more dust than you would with a four-wheel drive truck, especially if you close the windows and doors. These always get more dust. The windows absolutely help, but you're always gonna deal with that. That's just the nature of these things. Noise is probably our biggest complaint with the side-by-sides, and it's across the board, all of them. So if you're gonna own one of these, you just have to know they're not that quiet. Now, if you're rock crawling, they're better, but we found you really need some sort of ear protection and something like the intercom Senna device is really helpful because then you can actually communicate without it being so uh, stressful or you know, wearing out your voice you know, if you're out for a long trip. So a lot of it depends on how you use it because if you're only going out for 30 minutes, you but I can just stuff some earplugs in and be fine. But if you're going out for an all-day adventure, multi-day, that's where those headsets really are nice. Otherwise, I think our feedback initially really stays true. I think these things are amazing. The capability, the things I love about it, is it's so light. You're talking less than 2,000 pounds in something with massive tires. It's just incredible the places it will go. It just is mind blowing. And it's so much fun to just try things. And if it doesn't work and you get stuck, you can get unstuck so very easily, typically without even using the winch. It's just a fun experience. I think that's the best way to describe owning one of these. It's just, it's fun. And if you're looking for a turnkey off-road style vehicle, these are awesome and you get a lot of capability and performance for the money. Even though these things do get really expensive quickly, you know, and the modifications add up really fast. You know, we easily have over $15,000 in modifications in this thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you were comparatively building another off-road truck and you wanted it to perform and go the same place as this goes, you would spend so much more money that's something that we really do love with this thing. It's also kind of nice because if you want to drive across country, you can just trailer it versus driving it. And if you have an extreme off-roader, 
you're either not enjoying the road trip getting there or you're trailering it but your trailer setup is going to weigh a ton it's going to be really bulky and more difficult to live with whereas you can trailer these with a tiny little trailer and uh, it's just easier to deal with on that uh, parking is really easy you know there's a lot of things that are just super nice with them the narrow small size you can just fit up any trail especially any trail that's made for a truck and you don't have to worry about smashing a panel or body damage because it's all plastic you know so realistically if you brushed into something it would just deflect out of the way and it's just crazy because you see the front tires stick out past the front nose of the vehicle so you can just run straight into a wall almost and go straight up it and then the front is tapered inwards as, as well as the rear so when you are driving through something or you fall off something in the back you're not going to worry about hitting your body panels so it is just a lot more fun experience off-roading with this thing than it is a truck where you're always you know going oh my gosh am I going to hit something and worried about damaging your pretty paint and whatnot um, these are also really easy to clean up after you go on an adventure, which is nice because mostly it's water uh, proofed, so you can more or less just wash it out, which is a really nice feature with them. So overall, I think we've really enjoyed our time owning the side-by-side -side, and it was something I wanted to do for a long time. So it was just neat to be able to do it and build it up and take it on an epic adventure with a ton of really cool trails and to be able to run trails back to back to back and not have to worry about it. That's something that we've never been able to do with a standard four wheel drive truck. So stay tuned, we're gonna go through and show all of the different parts that we've collected on the vehicle, the stuff we've taken off and just kind of give an overview of everything we've done with that. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, if you're not interested in watching that, I appreciate thumbs up. We appreciate the encouragement. Stay tuned, subscribe if you'd like to find out what our next vehicle is. And we will be doing some more fun adventures coming up. So thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you guys later. All of the leftover stock parts, we've got a box that has the stock block off plate, some extra bolts and extra bolts, basically a box full of bolts. Over here, we've got the Rhino 2.0 boxes that the new axles came in. All the stock axles are back in that box and they only have about 700, eh, 800 miles on them, something like that. And then we've got the front sway bar, which can easily be bolted back on. However, we like it with it removed. It has the stock tender springs that sit on top of the main springs, the stock upper control arms in the front, stock lower control arms in the rear, the rear lower control arms, the stock tie rods inner and outer, and then for extra other parts we've got the flag mount and you can mount it back on the side by side. We've got the stock steel winch cable and the Fairlead, and those have not been used, and it now is synthetic. And then we have the stock tires. These are a 30 inch tire. It's the Carnivore tire by Maxxis, and they're on stock wheels with the stock lug nuts, and they have very little wear on them. Um, I think we took them off right around a thousand miles on them, and they are in really good shape. There's no real distinguishable wear, um, no damage, no plugs, nothing like that, no repairs on them. And they're all in pretty good shape. There's a few small marks on a couple of the rims, but otherwise, pretty nice. And all of the new parts that we have, we've got this trim panel for the doors, if you get the hard doors, that came with, uh, I think the windows or the the top, I don't remember what. And then we've got the a brand new foam air cleaner, brand new lower air cleaner, the air cleaner oil from Yamaha, and then mineral spirits to clean the foam filter. 
We've got a brand new wet clutch, just as a spare to have on hand. We haven't needed it. We've got some extra of the sound deadener. A factory service manual. I also have the digital version of it. And then we've got a brand new factory rack and pinion with the inner tie rods. So that's just as a spare part. So far, no problems with the factory rack, but we weren't sure how durable it was gonna be. We figured having a stock on the hand might prove beneficial. So far, it's just an extra part. Then we've got a bunch of extra nuts and bolts. These are just factory parts from taking apart trim panels and so forth. A front axle seal and a front hood latch. These are just common things to lose or break. Um, some extra lug nuts that are splined. And then we've got the DinoJet tuner from Weller Racing that has all the programmed tunes in there that includes the performance tune as well as you can run it on 87 octane. You can run any of those tunes on there. Currently it's just running the Performance 91 tune on it. Then we've got a bunch of spare parts for the steering. It has the Weller heavy duty tie rods and these are replacement tie rod ends, replacement boots, and the bolts for it. That way you can change them out anytime they start getting wear. For extra fluids, we have the gear butter that is currently in the front and rear differentials. And I've got an extra bottle of that. It's running the Yamalube factory recommended in the transmission and axles. Uh, we're running the Mobile One 1040 synthetic motor oil. It's got another factory oil filter. Iridium spark plugs. We replaced the spark plugs. I think it was around 1,000, 1,100 miles on it. So they're very new still. And then all of the factory little crush washers for doing the oil change. Then for the clutch parts, we have the original clutch sleeve with the spring. It currently has the Weller Racing uh, sleeve in there that is basically tuned for um, better crawl ratio. And it actually increases top speed too, which is kind of interesting. And then we've got a bunch of the seals for the clutch whenever you're servicing it. And we've got the clutch spring compression tool, a tink seal lubricant, which is currently in the clutch, a brand new belt, which our current belt has been doing great. So we'll just keep that as a spare, a little brush for lubrication and more extra parts, such as more of the lubricant. For recovery gear, we'll start with the helmets. We've got two dot helmets. They are large and a small, and that's just to meet regs if you're in California and you're required to have a helmet. We bought those, we'll include those with the vehicle. And then for recovery gear, we've got a bag to put all the recovery stuff in. Then we've got two snatch blocks that basically, it's really slick because it's synthetic, and then these just spin so you can actually do a side pull if you needed to. A tree strap, extra uh, winch line, so if you're doing a long pull, you can get further out, um, a rear recovery point, um, so recovering somebody else, a couple uh, shack soft shackles, um, tire pressure gauge, and then this is a tire repair kit, and it has the CO2, and you can uh, plug your tires and patch them, and, and we have extra CO2 cartridges there as well. Kind of the essential gear uh, for uh, carrying with one of these things on a multi-day trip especially. Overland camping gear, we have two black bins that fit in the bed perfectly under the rack that we built. And we have camping gear. The first is a self-inflating foam mattress that's about three inches thick and works perfect for two people. We've got a nice four-man tent that is very spacious for two people. A ground tarp, two pillows, that compress very nicely. And then the second tote, we have 
all of our food gear. So we've got two roto packs for water. We've got some mountain house meals, so you can have a couple nights with a couple people. Some extra paper towels, and of course, nice silverware. So you've got some forks, knives, cutting knife, can opener, and then this is your cook stove, and two extra canisters of the butane for cooking with it. A cup, a couple of bowls, cutting board, soap, a uh, little scrubber pad, and a shovel. All you really need to do is bring your sleeping bag and some clothes. You're good to go camping, go overlands, go for a multi-day trip.